Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the, Jesus and his disciples were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, now the, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. Immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just, says, just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a coat, colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it to it. To it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, it was already late. He went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love which, by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. for you, the king of the Jews? 
for he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas from them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. <laughs> then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? They shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. <laughs> Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves, and saying, he, sir, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, full of, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, 
Truly, this was God's Son. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Carrots, eggs, or coffee? Some years ago, my wife Marguerite introduced me to a story about a young woman who went to see her grandmother and told her about her life and how things had become so difficult for her. She did not know how she was going to make it and wanted to give up. She was tired of fighting and struggling. It seemed as soon as one problem was solved, a new one arose. Her grandmother took her to the kitchen. She filled three pots with water and placed them on the stove. Soon the pots came to boil. In the first, she placed carrots. In the second, she placed eggs, and in the last, she placed ground coffee beans. Then she let them sit and boil without saying a word. Several minutes later, she turned off the burners. She fished the carrots out and placed them in a bowl. She pulled the eggs out and placed them in a bowl. Then she ladled the coffee out and placed it in a bowl. Turning to her granddaughter, she asked, tell me, what do you see? Carrots, eggs, and coffee, she replied. Her grandmother brought her closer and asked her to feel the carrots. She did and noted that they were soft. The grandmother then asked the granddaughter to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed a hard-boiled egg. Finally, the grandmother asked the granddaughter to sip the coffee. The granddaughter smiled as she tasted its rich flavor. The granddaughter then asked, what does this mean? Her grandmother explained that each of these objects had faced the same adversity, boiling water. Each had reacted differently. The carrot went in strong, hard, and unrelenting. However, after being subjected to the boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg had been fragile. Its thin outer shell had protected its liquid interior. But after sitting through the boiling water, its inside became hardened. The ground coffee beans were unique, however. After they were in the boiling water, they had changed the water. Which are you, asked the grandmother. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? Think of this, which am I? Am I the carrot that seems strong, but with pain and adversity, do I wilt and become soft and lose my strength? Am I the egg that starts with the malleable heart but changes with the heat? Do I have a fluid spirit but after a death, a breakup, a financial hardship or some other trial, have I become hardened and stiff? Does my shell look the same but on the inside am I bitter and tough with a stiff spirit and with a hardened heart? Or am I like the coffee bean? The bean actually changes the hot water, the very circumstances that bring the pain. When the water gets hot, it releases the fragrance and the flavor. If you are like the bean, when things are at their worst, you get better and change the situation around you. When the hour is the darkest and trials are the greatest, do you elevate yourself to another level? How do you handle adversity? Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? Today, we observe the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Son of Man is betrayed and given into the hands of sinners. The cross remains at the center of our Christian lives. That cross is first and foremost a symbol of suffering. But as we all know, and this is the important point of this day, we all know we don't celebrate as Christians this day, because suffering transformed Jesus. No, we celebrate the cross because Jesus 
transformed suffering. Suffering did not transform Jesus. Jesus transformed suffering. Suffering will not transform our life, but being one with Christ in this life can transform our suffering. St. Paul reminds us that the cross is far from being a symbol of suffering alone. No, for Paul, the cross was a sign of victory. Like our coffee bean analogy, Jesus would change all that was around him. And guess what? That includes us. One of the characters of the passion story that continues to intrigue me is Simon of Cyrene. He is first compelled to carry the cross of Christ. But we believe in the end, he was changed by the experience. He would become a disciple of Christ. And how do we know that? Well, it's in the text. Because Simon was introduced in the passion narrative, we are told that he was the father of Alexander and Rufus. How do we know that? Well, we know that, obviously, because Simon decided to stay around. We got to know Simon in the community as we also got to know his family. He who was compelled became a disciple. Have we not all in this life sometimes been compelled to believe, to go to church? I'm not sure I really want to be there. Simon's your guy. Hang around and watch miracles happen. Because Simon was introduced in that passion narrative, because he was included in the sacred story, he continues to walk with the wounded one. For we see that we walk the way of the cross, having started to walk that way. As we enter into that pilgrimage of faith, we discover that we now have the means to change. We also have the choice like Simon, to be changed. My last word, I'll see you at the coffee hour. <laughs> Amen. Christ and celebrate the Paschal Mystery, let us earnestly pray to God for all peoples everywhere, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, sharing the death and resurrection of Christ, for Church of the Heavenly Rest in Estill, South Carolina, and the Church of the Province of West Africa, let us pray. For Ruth, our presiding bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and for all those preparing for baptism, confirmation, reception, or affirmation, let us pray. For all nations and peoples, for justice, mercy, and peace in all the world, for all who serve at home or overseas in the military, or in mission or outreach work, for Sam, Dennis, Henry, Brian, Keen, Maxim, Louisa, Edward, Justin, Andrew, Brad, Jake, Maxwell, Drew, Legree, Kurt, Thomas, Henry, Griffin, Will, Bust, Trevor, Matthew, Christian, and Jack. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, let us pray. For all who are in need, the hungry, the homeless, and all those in prison, may they know Christ stands with them in their time of greatest need. Let us pray. For Mason Prep, Simmons Pinckney Middle School, and all places of learning, let us pray. 
for our families, friends, and all those we love, for those in special need, for Karen, Michael, Betty, Nancy, Andy, Rob, Rhett, Antonia, Chris, Mary, Clifford, Randy, Martha, Martha Ann, excuse me, Chris, Rocky, Jimmy, Donald, Lynn, Bob, and Tyler, that they may know the healing power of God. Let us pray. For those who have died, remembering Ed Kachuk and Martha Remington Sharnitsky, that they may find an eternal dwelling place in heaven, let us pray. Transforming God, lead us in all our efforts as we seek the renewal of this holy place. By the power of your Holy Spirit, transform our life, empower our work, and enrich our capacity to serve. As we have known your desire to save, may we also know your power to transform. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Welcome to Gracious Cathedral. Join us, of course, afterwards for some fellowship refreshment in Hanahan Hall. Uh, in particular, note this week we've placed in the uh, bulletin all of the uh, Holy Week services, uh, starting today, running through next Sunday. And uh, just a couple to note, on Friday, there are two offerings, the Stations of the Cross at 10 and the Good Friday Liturgy at noon. Both are uh, appropriate liturgies to attend, but let me note that the 10 o'clock is particularly family-friendly, 9 o'clock-friendly, children-friendly, as we go outside and uh, around the cathedral, walk the way of the cross as we do the stations. So if you're thinking about what service on Sunday for children, and of course, we want to get the children involved, so if children want to be involved in some of the readings, they just need to speak to us, and we'll include them in the actual uh, celebration of that service. That's at 10 o'clock on Good Friday, and then at noon, the regular service. All the other notices, as they are contained in the bulletin, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For, he, for our sins he was lifted high up on the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the glorified life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go forth in the name of the crucified Christ. 